welcome in this Lightroom quick edit I'm gonna take this raw file and I'm gonna turn it into a picture like this in of course just about five minutes. So another winterscape snapshot of this path and this really beautiful tree that is snow covered. Let's get started with editing, bringing up the shadows and I'm actually going to bring up the exposure as well because I think I've underexposed that in camera. Then let's see contrast itself. I might even go a little bit minus contrast and bring up the whites of course. Now, of course, I want to make sure that I don't clip anything. Let's bring down the highlights and then bring up the white so we have a little bit more leeway to work with than blacks themselves. I might even bring actually up the blacks, but in return bring up the contrast slider. So we have a lot of shadow detail, but also some sort of contrast and not a completely flat picture. Let's go with clarity here, definitely gonna add some clarity and I think the most important thing here is color temperature. Now I think this color temperature actually works, you know, it emphasizes the cold winter mood, but I actually wanna go a little bit different here for this scene, I really wanna warm that up and not only make the whole scene a little bit more neutral, but also really warming up everything and also bring the tint a little bit to the right and I think I really like this look so let's go quickly down to the tonal curve of course bring up the lights and let's see darks gonna bring up the darks and the shadows themselves I might even bring up the shadows here as you surely know the shadows just affect the very dark parts of your picture down here at the tonal curve so if I bring them up, it really recovers a lot of the very dark shadows in the photo. So now, I, because I have so much uh, detail, I can go into the contrast slider and bring that one even more to the right. So I think that works pretty good. Let's go to split toning actually, because I really am curious if split toning will work in this photo. And I actually think, hmm, let me go through the colors here before I make a decision. But yeah, I think I want to add a little bit of orange with a little bit of a reddish tone just for the highlights here. Just a little bit, something like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Then detail, let's just go in one to one. Bring the color to the right so we get rid of most of this color noise. The noise reduction itself. Um, hmm. I might even bring the noise reduction a little bit to the right just because the picture is kind of noisy and uh, I've raised the shadows so much and the exposure as well and I mean you probably heard it a thousand times but I usually don't like the noise reduction but since this picture is so soft and really filled with snow with not much texture anyways I really don't mind noise reduction as much and uh, to kind of bring some of that detail back that we lost through the noise reduction, especially in these uh, trees and these leaves right here, I'm gonna increase the sharpening to around 60, zoom back out again and bring the masking slider to the right. So the last thing here I'm gonna do is remove chromatic aberration. So when I'm actually looking at the picture, I think there could be a little bit more vibrance, especially in the blues. I mean, there's not much color except for the blues here anyways. So I might as well just bring up the global vibrance slider. And I think that looks even better. Then let me grab a graduated filter and add some custom vignetting to close out the picture. Just go very much minus here, just with a very harsh filter. And also do the same thing up here. Up here, I really don't want to make it as obvious, so I'm going to pull back with the exposure a little bit. And I think that works pretty well. So actually, let me bring up the exposure here once again. Still remaining in the minus, but it was just a little bit too much. And speaking of graduated filters, I really can't seem to get enough of those. I'm going to grab another one and just drag it to the left and bring down the exposure right here so we get even more a sense of depth. And I'm also going to do the same thing here on the right. I really enjoy this custom vignetting because I really can adjust every corner as much as it needs. 
and hmm. Hmm, <laughs> that reminds me of something, so I've added this closing out of the picture just for the very top, but I might actually delete that in exchange for a larger filter over the entire top right, the entire sky portion, just because the photo is a little bit too evenly lit. So by adding a big graduated filter over the entire right portion, the entire sky here, and just increasing the exposure, we actually add a lot of interest, a lot of uh, differentiation in the lighting. And just quickly to show you, here's before any graduated filters, and here's after, looks way more dynamic. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is grab a radial filter and add some dodge and burning. So as always, see you in a second. Alright, so I've actually added quite a few radial filters, both minus and plus exposure, here's before any, and here's after, really just makes everything more interesting, and it complexifies the light. So let me go into before and after, here is the before, it probably was a little bit more than 5 minutes, and here is after, but I really am happy with the result that we got. I definitely think it's a much stronger picture at the end. And all of that in just about 5 or a little bit more than that minutes, I definitely think that is a very good result. As always, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and take care.